Pipes, pipes, pipes. Gotta love them. And I do. I love my pipes. I love pipes that aren't mine. I love new pipes, estate pipes, factory pipes, artisan pipes. I love all pipes. In fact, I get giddy every time I see them in public, especially in an environment that you wouldn't typically expect to see them. Thinking antique stores, discovering a, a small pipe store or tobacconist that you didn't even know existed, maybe someone smoking a pipe in their car, or even at something like a renaissance fair or something. Not that I go to those. <laughs> Nerds. Well met friends, my name is Adam and this is Get Piped, where we love to pipe. And today's piping is all about my own personal pipe collection. Call it the state of my pipe smoking collection, 2023, part one, factory edition. I know, I know, long, long title, but my original plan was to do all of the pipes at once, including the artisan, but it would have been like a 35, 40, 50 minute video and yeah, just not a great idea. So shout out to the Galactic Get Pipe Pipe Club members who voted for me to break this up into two parts, a factory and an artisan edition before I made a, a really dumb decision. <laughs> but my intent is to do this maybe once a year or, or potentially sooner or later, given any drastic changes of, of my collection. So I wouldn't necessarily go back into super depth on the ones that you'll see today and, and the one to come with the artisan video, but rather any drastic additions or subtractions. Now, I've been running this channel for about three years now, and I've already seen some serious evolutions, revolutions, and even arguable purges. As I look back, I do wish I had done something like this before in an attempt to document the collection's change over time. But that's exactly what this episode intends to do, or at least intends to put into motion. In this episode, which will absolutely be long and, and not at all straight to the point, just like every other episode video of mine and every other video that will continue to ever come after this, I will show you every single factory pipe I own. In this episode, I'll give you the breakdown of the general cost of each on screen, the reason I own it, any significant reasons I wanted it, obtained it, and then talk about how often I reach for it in my rotation. And I use the word rotation loosely because in reality, the right pipe just calls to me. Sometimes some of these pipes never call to me. If that's the case, I'll explain why and why it remains in my collection. And if we find out I don't have a good reason, well, telltale sign to let it move on. That said, before we jump in, I think it's important to at least establish the original basis of my collection, at least as best as I can. As mentioned, it has undergone some significant change since I began my pipe smoking journey. So as we look back to the origins of Get Piped, we find that I was absolutely a Peterson fanboy several prior episodes of, of much lesser quality and much higher cringe factor, you'll see a myriad of Peterson pipes through the use of B-roll on pipe shelves in the background, and even an episode where I unbox a package of Peterson products. And that episode was really interesting because it really does to a degree touch on my collection's initial baseline with two key factors. The first being, of course, that I was a Peterson collector, and the second, having a crippling affliction of PAD. That's a pipe acquisition disorder. Now this pipe acquisition disorder, that this PAD is a term coined by the common folk of the pipe community who found that they shared this common affliction, a disorder that, that pulls the pipe smoker to purchase and acquire more and more and more and more pipes. One might argue that PAD is defined by the number of pipes he or she has. Others might define it as the inability to not buy pipes, namely those who see it and buy it. 
in my view, there's probably a touch of both of those elements to, to put together that PAD. But that unboxing video certainly does a great job of showcasing how bad my PAD was. Perhaps it's not worth your view today, but to summarize, I ordered a bunch of things from smokingpipes.com one day and completely forgot. By the time the package arrived, what, some two to three days later, I had absolutely no recollection of what I had ordered. It made for an entertaining unboxing for sure, but all in all, I think that expertly captures my previous state of PAD and the previous state of my pipe collection, at least to a degree. I was purchasing pipes left and right at rates so frequent that I couldn't even remember when or what I was ordering. Do not recommend. I've awoken from the dizzying daydream of PAD I once had, and I've gotten my collection under control. I've even let go many, many, many pipes since then, and, and in fact, many of those Petersons have been passed on to other enthusiasts like myself. And this is what's truly beautiful about pipe collecting. Pipes are tools, yes, but they possess a, a magic to them, one that calls to each of us. Pipe selection is a personal journey. Your makeup, past experiences, your, your values, your eyes, your neurons, chemicals, things dictate whether or not you like a particular pipe or not. At the time, the Irish Marks catalog called to me. I mean, really, it was banging on my bedroom door when I was trying to sleep, but... that's what I longed for. Today, well, things have changed a little bit. I still have a soft spot for Peterson, and they're definitely my go-to factory pipe for sure, but as we dive into my collection today, you'll see a change, a change of desire, a change of calling. And again, that's okay. You should never feel like you have to keep a pipe that just isn't for you anymore. And I've fought some tough battles with that in the past, or maybe the story that brought a given pipe into my hands was, was so awesome or the interaction with the artisan was so memorable that I felt almost bad. No, no, not almost, but, but genuinely felt bad to let it go. I elaborate on a particular instance in my podcast regarding an acquisition at the recent Chicago Pipe Show 2023. You can tune into episode 069 titled Cover My Ash, letting, go, letting the Chicago smoke settle to hear that little heart to heart between me and the listener. But enough of the past, let's get into the current the current state of my smoking pipe collection, factory edition. I'll start by saying, I know, I have a lot of pipes. Now, that number's actually gone down a great deal. I, I recall at one point in time, I had around 125-ish. And honestly, after this video, I believe it will decrease even more. By going through individually each pipe, I am forced to face the reality on whether each piece truly fits into my collection or not. After all, a collection is a very intimate thing, right? You wouldn't want any pieces that, that don't truly reflect you. Again, even if they once did in the past. But let's get into it. Let's take a look at the current state of my Peterson pipe collection. That's only fitting, right? Well, significantly smaller than it has been historically, I currently have 13-ish 14 pipes. I'll explain that 14-ish one in a moment. But very surprisingly, I only have a single straight Peterson pipe. This little ebony tankard, which has been heavily smoked. I used to have a Peterson tankard of every finish with their matching and really complementary barrel shapes too. I found that only this tankard did the magic for me. And I'll never let it go. As for the others that are no more, I found that I was chasing a collection. And you see, you can't chase a collection. I mean, maybe you can, but for me, my collection, they got a call to me. I was chasing really the idea of a tankard and barrel collection over the actual want or desire or the pipes that made up the collection, if that makes sense. 
And actually, I still have two barrel pipes, but I don't really count them. One was broken at the tenon when I dropped it one day, and the other is an old, maybe 1940s era barrel. It still works, I guess, but it was an eBay buy many, many months ago, probably a year or two at this point, that I just never had restored. I plan to one day, but I don't know. Will it stay in my collection? I guess we shall see. Once I repair this newer one, the one with the broken tenon, it's going straight to redeemed pipes on Instagram or Facebook or eBay. Check him out, a, a good friend of mine, Ben at redeempipes.com. In fact, I'm sure several of these pipes I no longer want will be for resale on his site in the coming months. It's the reality of it. Now that said, neither of these two pipes are the 14th-ish pipe. Bear with me on that. But before we move on to the Ben Petersons that I have, and I'm realizing now that this is apparently my favorite shape by the Irish Pipe Factory. This 221 Peterson spigot pipe is one of my oldest. Acquired from my first local brick and mortar back in Georgia outside of Fort Benning, a place where I frequented on a, a weekly, if not bi-weekly basis, and, and even left with a pipe most of those trips. See, now you're putting together how on earth that 125 pipe figure I mentioned earlier came to be. But while many of those pipes did not last, this one did. Now, I don't love fishtails from Peterson as, as much as I do the P-Lip. Many hate the P-Lip, meaning the iconic little mouth bit with the hole on top. But for me, it's what makes a Peterson a Peterson. I love it. That said, I'd never smoke a, a P-Lip stem fixed to a non-Peterson pipe. That would be blasphemy to me. <laughs> Hell no. Anyway, the next five pipes share the same similar characteristic. A Dairy 230 with a beautiful coffee caramel bowl and stem. A 2020 Christmas Pete gifted to me by Get Wifed herself. An 05 Peterson Iran that has served as a great working man's pipe. A fancier workhorse pipe and actually my only traditional system pipe. A standard 305 with another military mount. And then finally of this batch, the utterly beautiful Shape 69 Peterson Rua Spigot. The Peterson Rua was the start of something particularly special from Peterson. To me, it marked a deliberate change in their historical approach to finishing. The Rua yields some magical sandblasting techniques that are exclusive to Peterson, when previously their blasts were pretty lackluster. Yet, onto some of my more unique Petersons, I have two beauties here, both X220 shaped variants. Both are smooth, bent, and possess some of that ooh, shiny characteristic. The Peterson Gold Spigot is just an incredible piece of art. This X220S features a strong bowl that is reflective of the Irish pipe making tradition. Gold spigots are quite rare, not in the sense that they're never made, but in the sense that when they are made, they sell very fast. Next to it, another pipe that will never leave my collection, a Peterson Amber Spigot. This X220, no S, was a gift from my father. The Peterson Amber stem tail is quite interesting, and perhaps it's just a Peterson wives tail, but we know Amber to have been used back in the day for pipe stems. It was expensive, yet common practice to more ornately adorn classy pipes. Well, today, just like Jurassic Park would have you believe, it's quite rare and actually pretty delicate stuff. Pipe makers seldom use real amber as it's a bit antiquated and extremely expensive. That said, the tale goes on to say that an old box of amber stems from the 1930s was found in some hidden recess of the Peterson Pipe Factory. The decision to use them was ultimately made for a premium pipeline today. Is my amber from 1930 or before? Who knows? Hip Hop paid a dollar amount that would lead me to believe so, so I'm, I'm going to stick with that. The next set is a set of three extremely rare Peterson pieces, only one of which is Briar. This was a golden ticket find on eBay, an opera pipe, shaped to fit comfortably and delicately in a coat's front pocket. Thinking back to the days where American and European culture dressed in three-piece suits daily, and that's exactly when this Briar was made. It dates back to the late 1890s. The hallmark, however, is not one that is shown in any of their historic catalogs. Yet I reached out to Peterson of Dublin to, to take a closer look. I actually had their head of archives and their chief pipe dating expert take a look at it. They confirmed that the piece is in fact genuine and was certainly made long ago in the Peterson factory. Their best guess was that it was made for potentially a special individual or perhaps one of the factory's own pipe makers thus the unique hallmark. When I first received it, it was in pretty rough shape. But after a restoration, it's it's ready to be smoked. And I haven't yet. 
This one is just too precious to me. I, I adore the opera shape, that oval bowl. I, I love the pipe's history and well, it's rare and it's also tired. The Briar has seen better days. The mount is beginning to separate and even seems to have been repaired at some point before. She will smoke again, but for now, she rests as one of my most prized pipe pieces. Now, as for the non-Briars, I have one Meerschaum and one Clay. Many folks didn't even know that Peterson made mirrors and clays. I mean, that would be half right because they don't, at least not anymore. My Meerschaum is an all-black African block mirror from 1975. Very seldom do I see these around online or in collections, and similarly, I very seldomly smoke this guy, but it's pretty all the same. The other pipe, while white like a traditional Meerschaum, is actually a Peterson Brevet clay. One of the original, in fact. Peterson clays date back to the early 1900s where they were first made in France, hence the term Brevet, meaning patent in French. By 1906, they had two shapes, a 08 and a 12. Mine, a, a 12, was likely made sometime between 1906 and 1932-ish, probably the late 1920s. This was another eBay find, which was, again, another golden ticket as well. It's in great condition for a 100-year-old pipe, and it isn't heavily colored. This pipe isn't going anywhere either. All right, before we hit the 13th pipe, I'll actually, oddly enough, kind of pivot here and talk about the 14th-ish pipe. While it's not a prized possession, it, it is quite unique and rare, and it's definitely a pipe, but... I consider it ish because I find it more of a collectible. I will never smoke this thing, ever. I just didn't buy it to smoke. The pipe is glorious. An unsmoked Peterson Meerschaum from 1986. I'm not even sure how I ended up getting this, but it was certainly through a, a, a very lucky eBay buyout. I don't typically get into the bidding wars and, and really didn't back then either, but the price displayed is what I think it's worth, but that's just speculation. To be honest, I have no idea. You just never ever see these, especially in this condition. This is a pipe that stays in this box. A funny thing, huh? What, what good is it doing in there? Can't even see it. But well, I know it's there and I love it. All right, and finally to close this Peterson portion of my factory collection, I've saved maybe not my favorite, maybe not my best, but Certainly one of my most special for last. This Peterson Church Warden was one of my very first pipes. In fact, it was my first real pipe. Prior to this pipe, I owned a hand-me-down corn cob that had literal tooth holes in it and several generic Amazon pipes of cheap wood. And this pipe just marked my first branded pipe. And at the time, I didn't even know there were good or bad brands. I, in fact, didn't even know there were really pipe brands at all. This Church Warden, however, was an incredible gift from my father. Get pop. He's, he's, he's always coming in with those good gifts. My dad, a cigar guy, and knowing nothing about pipes at the time, went out of his way to find the pipe guys at the local cigar bar. They told him that a Peterson was a, a legendary company in the pipe making sphere, and this pipe, alongside the Peterson name, would command presence and quality. They were right. I love this pipe. He handed me the box, and when I opened it, I was amazed. It popped, went on to say, I now own one of the finest smoking pipes in the world. It would go on many journeys with me. Once I actually snapped the pipe at the tenon, I, I know, I have a problem with that. Sue me. But then I got it fixed up and even restored. It looks damn near new, save some of the teeth chatter. I reach for this pipe sparingly. I neglect church wardens these days due to their often impracticality, but holding this piece in hand is, is getting me sentimental. Might be time to give her some reps. Okay, now we'll start rolling through these. Don't look at the time remaining. We're just going to keep going. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue the church warden trend. And similarly to my first real pipe, my first pipe pipe. Well, other than the cob that I lost three days after bringing it back to my room in college, but this smoked acorn-ish church warden was my first briar pipe. I picked it up at a small place I've talked about on the show before in Burlington, Vermont, Garcia's. I hope that place is still there. I'd love to visit and see the selection now, having been in the pipe sphere for five plus years. But clearly I was a Gandalf pipe guy. You know, the ones who Google Gandalf pipe when they first discover pipes. This was no exception. But I was happy to get my very first pipe. I call this my very first pipe because it was the very first pipe I purchased. And it still smells of wonderful aromatics from years past. The next three are kind of miscellaneous. I used the second Acorn Church Warden pipe from McQueen pipes when I'm feeling medieval. 
and the red church warden from Flogo Works as a symbol of my marriage. All my groomsmen were given a version of this pipe with their initials written in runes, and I had my own made in the distinct red color as well. The little guy in the middle, some antique store find. I'm no arborist, but this is definitely not the right wood to smoke for pipes. <laughs> Though I absolutely have. More of a decoration at this point. Cute little thing it is. The last church warden was a gift. Custom made church warden of dwarven design. This one means a lot to me. It was made as a farewell gift from my infantry platoon back in Washington. Second platoon, 123 infantry. Sergeant first class murder hound himself tirelessly worked on this pipe from the learning to the making and it's definitely made out of something that's probably not supposed to be smoked either but it will be smoked all the same in the many moons to come most of the men from the platoon signed it as well this is incredible too man now he was my first platoon sergeant my first real platoon sergeant i had others before him but he was a coach a trainer and a mentor three separate things he made me a good officer despite coming into the platoon while I was on my way out. The things I'd do for more time, man. Thanks. Let's continue on and knock out all of the cobs. I got 10 of them, with one more on the way, actually. Now that one on the way could it'd be an entire video in and of itself. Really interesting story with that. Nah, I'll, I'll save it for the podcast, but basically I'm like the Night's Watch from Missouri Meerschaum. And some ass came into our pipe club bad-mouthing Missouri Meerschaum. Follow the podcast. <laughs> these 10 cobs are great i could go on and on about cobs and, and why they rock so much my primary three are the shenandoah the mark twain and the smooth morgan i like the general macarthur for the flex and the fun but the others are typically my trial pipes to friends who are Curious about pipe smoking. But as you can tell, what the five star pipe was to General MacArthur in the 1940s, these three cobs were to me in my military career today. That sums up the cobs, but from here I'll pivot to some more miscellaneous factory pipes. We can sort this next grouping by more odd materials. Odd in this instance, meaning maybe less common. Good old clay pipe. Gotta have one. Falcon pipes with the removable bowl, another early collection pipe of mine. Uh, a baby Meerschaum I got from some fake smoke shop and, and an interesting real Meerschaum I picked up for a 30-day March Meerschaum Madness Challenge. A challenge where you smoke nothing but a single Meerschaum pipe for the entire month of March. I did a couple of years ago and I hated it. Never doing that again. Off of that, a genuine SMS block calabash pipe. Yes, as classic as it can get. This story is quite interesting as well. Some three years ago, I was conducting a, a 30 day miserable training event in Louisiana. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But by the event's end, I remember purchasing this pipe as a celebration to me. Well, when I got it, I thought it's so pretty, I didn't want to smoke it. And it actually remained dormant in its case until a recent trek, a pilgrimage, if you may. Yes, my trip to the Country Squire to celebrate their 500th episode and the closure of the Country Squire radio podcast. And it was from their store that I purchased this pipe online while lamenting in the barracks of Louisiana prior to going home. It felt right to smoke it for the very first time at the Country Squire. Really poetic, really. Alright, we still got more, and it seems you're in it for the long haul. We're gonna finish this. We're gonna finish this Factory Pipes episode, no two-parters of Factory. I feel like as a creator, I'm now valuing the whole Netflix, are you still watching thing. Like, at first I felt judged and was like, don't worry about me. But now, that I'm on the other side of it, I think it's more of like a, hey, are you still watching? Sorry, this keeps going. <laughs> but okay, Dunhills, an attention grabber. I got four of them, down two to three from my collection's height. In fact, I think this might shrink as well. I don't know, Dunhills are special and they have some beautiful history to them, but I found myself reaching for these less. All of these pipes are beautiful pieces that range in year from 80s to the 2010s, well really only one being in the 2000s and 
That's this little pipe, the little Dunhill dress pipe. The others, however, well, don't really have a story. Save this mini Liverpool shell briar, which was found at an extremely small nautical pipe shop in Polsbo, Washington. The cargo hold was its name. It's a marvelous little place. The owner, a gentleman with more than thrice the experience of my own, has been running that pipe store every day for the last 30 years. Yet this briar had seen some better days. The shank had snapped, not by me, and was repaired. The vulcanite had become so brittle over time that my very first clench put a hole in the bottom of it, and the rim has even lost some of its width from over the years. This pipe is worth by far the least on my Dunhills, but it's my favorite, and honestly, it might one day soon become my only Dunhill pipe. Until I'm able to get that birth year pipe, 1996, let me know. But that really wraps up the Dunhills. Next, we will swing back around to some more miscellaneous pipes and, and odd guys in the collection, starting with two great working pipes, Morgan Bones. I've owned many and, and let many go, but these two seem to be sticking around for the long haul, just like you in this video. This Morgan 1 series is, is interesting to me. To be honest, it's horrible to clench, it burns my eyeball from being so stubby, it's too small to hold, and it's just not a pleasant smoke. <laughs> And I love it. It's a damn cute pipe. I might need a pipe maker to, to sand down the stem a little bit, just a wee bit, so a little bit flatter so I can clench it better, but for now, I don't know, it's a cute pipe, I'm keeping it. Next we have is a Royal Danish pipe. Now Royal Danish pipes were made by Stanwell, but this pipe was not my first pick. Actually, it was. <laughs> Let me explain. It was the pipe that I got to select based on how I placed at my first slow smoke competition with the Seattle Pipe Club in Washington. The way it worked was the winner got the first pick of a table of prizes of pipes, tobacco, and, and other accessories. Then the last place guy, the guy who placed 15th, got nothing to pick and instead they were given a, a box of 1,000 matches. Pfft, what a chump. But yeah, this wasn't my first pick, but it also was because it was the only thing left since I placed 14. I don't think I like this pipe. <laughs> and then the next year I got 15th. Man, I don't, I don't want this pipe anymore. <laughs> moving along, moving along. Three additional pipes. A LaCroix, a La LaCroix, I don't know how we're saying that one, which I got from Mr. Steve Willett from LJ Peretti. A tulip looking cutty thing that I got in Chicago for $10. I still don't completely know why. It was from an artisan, I think, but he was cryptic and odd and, and probably for the small crack in the shank, but it was literally $10. I don't know. I don't even want it anymore, but I, I don't consider an artist. I don't even know who the guy was, and I don't know why it was so cheap. It's Briar. It's cool, I guess, but yeah, means nothing to me. Sorry if you're watching this, man. Maybe explain things better next year, <laughs> but way cooler as this long, deep dive shortly comes to an end. I've yet another extremely special pipe. Now, this pipe is epic. Yeah. This Tolkien and really Lord of the Rings films inspired Owland Balber. By Valen, that is. This is a fucking church warden. The box and presentation gives that instant Shire feel, and whenever I take a look, I, I feel like I'm in Bilbo's study selecting a pipe to smoke on his front porch alongside him. All just a good morning along Gandalf as he walks up to the gate. A and I'll be clear, while all of that adds to the wonder of this pipe, the magic is in its delivery. It was at the 2022 Vegas International Pipe Show when a gentleman came up to our table, Matthew, a listener of the Get Pipe podcast and a proud 12 percenter. If you know, you know. And he hands me this box wrapped in gift wrap. And upon opening, of course, I revealed this gem. And really, it is less of the pipe being a gem and, and more of the gift and the, the thoughtfulness being the gem. Man, Matthew, if you ever happen to see this, just know I I can't thank you enough. This is another one of my hang on the wall, not going anywhere pipes ever. Within he also included a heartfelt letter that, that really pierced my own. And it's something that's quite special to me and it will remain that way moving forward. Now that wraps it up. 
Not really. I actually have several Mr. Brog pipes that are really awesome, but you've already seen them in the Brog Factory Spotlight episode. But what you haven't seen is this Mr. Brog, another in the Winsent line. This pipe was sent to me as a thank you for that video. Now this pipe is just damn unique. I, I love this thing, man. This thing is sick, this is a pipe. But for real, onto our final three factory pipe. This pipe, a unique piece in its own right, being a Calabash-ish, Calabish, is a Retrace smoking pipe, and it's actually my only Retrace pipe. Now, Retrace is a Scottish-ish pipe company, Scott-ish <laughs> pipe making company with a long history. Today, they're manufactured throughout Europe and not actually in Scotland anymore, but they still make some great smoking pipe. And they were recently acquired by Cole House and Cobb. I got this pipe for one reason. It's the Nimbus. Now we will finally conclude here with the Italians. Both of these pipes are very special to me. On the left, we have my one and only Costello pipe. Now I have owned a couple prior, but just couldn't get them to agree with my stem clenching habit. I'd always found them to be far too rounded or thick and maybe too bulky for my taste. I just didn't really like them. But then I came across this pipe at the little yet massively historic McCranny's Pipe Shop in North Carolina. I was actually on a little weekend vacation to, to visit my good friend Brian Levine of the Pipes Magazine radio show. Yeah, I know, his show's way better than mine, okay? Don't tell me. But we made the trip over to McCranny's and there I got a ton of tobacco exclusive to the McCranny's line and this Costello pipe. It's funny, Brian actually tried to get me to not buy this pipe, just like Get Wife, but man, me and Matthew McCranny, we were both on the same page here. This pipe was awesome and I had to have it. And I'm so happy to have found a Costello that was made for me. This Quad K Costello clenches really, really well, has a beautiful grain and a brilliant shape and stem design. And it might just be my last Costello, but I'll likely keep this forever. It also symbolizes that wonderful trip to the store and with a good friend. Be sure to listen to episode 551 of the Pipes Magazine radio show for me and Brian's humorous back and forth. But my final factory pipe is, gosh, finally. This was quite the endeavor to make, man. And I thought I was gonna do the artisans as well. That episode might be quite delayed, but <laughs> this final factory pipe is an elegant Sir Jacopo smoking pipe. Another mighty Italian pipe factory, Sir Jacopo is among the finest high-class Italian pipe companies in history. This, albeit a bit feminine piece, was so captivating to me when I picked it up at the Las Vegas International Pipe Show in 2020. This was my final acquisition on Sunday afternoon as, as folks were closing down their tables and, and getting out of the show. And to be honest, it was actually less of the pipe I wanted and more of the person to purchase it from. That's what I wanted. And that's exactly what empowers this smoking pipe. The pipe dealer is Sally of the Pipe Tart, an absolute gift the world of pipe smoking. My heart fills whenever I see her at a pipe show. And I actually recall her saying in Chicago of 2022 that she was looking to soon retire and ultimately close up her shop. Once her stock is out, that will be the end of it. It will be the end of the Pipe Tart's long successful career of Italian pipe dealing. So when I saw her again in Vegas, I knew I couldn't pass up on this opportunity. I decided to get a pipe from Sally the Pipe Tart. My mind was made. I then had her sell me on a pipe of her choosing. Now, after Xing out some several Don Carloses and, and some other Jacopos and you know a couple Amorellis, we decided on this delightful smoking pipe, just as delightful as Sally herself. It was perfect. It was mine, and it will continue to be mine until the end of my days. Thank you, Sally. <sighs> I'm done. That's it. No more factory pipe collection. That's all of them. Okay. I have this one. And I don't even know if it counts. I didn't, I didn't even talk about it. It's a clay pipe. Yeah, clays are cool, whatever. It says made in Ireland, whatever. <laughs> Take 24 hours away from my content. Watch the end of another video for all the self plugs and subscribings and commentings and sharings and podcasts and discords and Instagrams and whatever the heck else I say all the time. That's it. You've all just been piped. And until the next piping, me, I'm out.